All right, this is Maru, and his roommate uh, Maya is back here behind me uh, sco uh, scouting out food from the baby. In this video, we're going to go over some how you can help your dog uh, stop being uh, stop suffering some, some separation anxiety. A lot of dogs uh, with separation anxiety start to see their humans leaving well before the humans actually leave the house. So they see us, we sit in a certain, we, we, we put a certain uh, set of clothes on. We sit in a certain place and put our shoes on here. We pick up our briefcase, we pick up our keys, our sunglasses, our purse, all these little things, and then we leave the house and we do little things, we turn the light switches off and all that stuff. All these things are contributing factors. The dog sees them happening and knows, that's okay, and knows that basically one step is leading to the next and the conclusion of this is I'm about to be abandoned and that is an insecurity for dogs. Now, a little sidebar before I show you the technique that we're gonna go over. If your dog separates from separation, suffers from separation anxiety, the absolute best thing you can do is teach your dog to stay. And it sounds contrary, but every time the guardian is sitting right here, every time she gets up and leaves the room, both dogs get up and follow her. They're with her, I'm guessing you probably don't go to the bathroom by yourself anymore. So the dogs are always with her. And so when, they, when she leaves, they go from 100% access to her to zero. And that is too big of a gulf. So what you want to do is teach your dog to stay. Now, if you don't know how to teach your dog to stay, I have a bunch of training videos on my website. Let me know if you want one. I teach for the three Ds. First for duration, up to five minutes. Then for distance. Only when the dog gets to five minutes do I start moving away. And at first one step, then two steps, then three steps. Eventually 20 steps and then out of sight for a second. And then I do for distractions with the dog on TV or different things that are going on. So I put the dog, I help it develop skill sets. Once the dog knows, and before I go to the next step, once the dog knows how to stay, then I put the dog to stay and I get up and go use the bathroom. And I come back and give the dog a release. Or I get up and go to uh, change clothes and I come back and give the dog a release. You want to help the dog practice being alone for progressively longer and longer periods of time, but knowing that you're still in the house. So they don't go to that panic mode. And now they have practice between zero and 100. And eventually you get to the point where you tell the dog to sit in the bedroom and you come out here and watch a TV show. And you go back and release the dog. And they are practicing being calm. When we're worked up, that is the worst time for us to learn anything. And when the dog is all worked up, they're not going to hear you. You can't really do any training. Okay, so teaching your dog to stay is, will really be really helpful for this. And let me know if you want to watch a video for that, and I'll share one with you later. But uh, the triggers that lead up to this are almost as important. And so because the dog sees it happening, it's more and more worked up. And by the time the person leaves, they've worked themselves up into a frenzy. So in this case, one of the triggers for the dog is picking up the keys. So I'm going to have the guardian do kind of a before and after. We, are, we started practicing this, and I decided to shoot the video. So I want you to get up and just kind of, you're going to jingle the keys and take a step that way and try to keep the dogs in the shot. I don't care if I'm in the shot for this. Um, so go ahead and uh, just stand up and pick the keys up, just like you normally would be leaving. So you saw how quickly the dog moves, and do you say goodbye to the dogs when you're leaving? Not always. Okay, so grab a seat again. So that movement, and you come back to me, um, you saw it, how quickly he started moving. Because as soon as the keys, she's about to leave, and I, I stay right on her, if I stay right on her, on her tail, maybe I can go with her. And a lot of times dogs with separation anxiety is two things. Number one, I, am, I don't have any practice, I'm so insecure when I'm by myself, I feel insecure. Or number two, and I think in this case, it's in this house it's both, and number two is, if the human leaves without my permission or without my, my presence, I can't protect the human. So that stresses me out. And I, these dogs don't have any, a lot of rules, and so I think that's a contributing factor. So anyways, for this one, what we want to do is we want to help the dog practice each one of these cues by themselves, independent of all the rest of the steps. I'm not even going to have you get up this time. I'm just going to have you pick up your keys and put them back down. Just pick them up and drop them. Let's have you on camera. Now go ahead and pick them up again. And again. You like and just keep on putting them up and down. So before he was lurching around the room, yeah, yeah. they started breathing heavy. That was, that's very casual. As he walked away, he was very casual. It's desensitizing. So what I would do is do your keys. Maybe one of the things I was recommending is one of the guardians like just observe the other guardian when they're leaving, going to work. Observe their leaving ritual. What are the things that you do? And I would give each dog a rating of one to 10 on their excitement level for that particular stimulus. So pick up the keys, maybe Maya is like a four, where uh, he is maybe an eight. So now we kind of know each one, if we know the intensity, we know how much we need to practice for each individual one. Practice the first step with one dog at a time, and eventually you probably can do it with both of them. But practice that one step over and over, she agrees with me. Uh, but practice that one step over and over until the dog does not even react. 
and then go to the next step and practice that one step by itself over and over again. So the dog doesn't react. I got a mic drop behind me, even better. Um, but eventually we get to the point where you help out. Oh. I'm a full service dog behaviorist. Um, so the idea is she's going to probably drop it right back on the floor again because that's fun for the kids and the dogs come over. But if we help the dogs practice each individual step independent of us leaving, so every once in a while leave your keys out here and you're watching TV, just pick them up and just jingle them a little bit. And after a while the jingle is no longer associated with a human leaving. And if we deprogram the dog for come, this little passive training, if we deprogram the dog for each individual step, then when they see them coming, and I've had some clients that once they do all the individual steps, they'll get up on their day off and get up and shower and go through everything like they normally would and then sit down and watch the U.S. Open. And the dog's like, they did everything and now they're not leaving. And so now we've desensitized and the dog is practiced. Also at the same time we're practicing helping them be alone and we're forcing rules and boundaries. So in, these case, in this dog's case, by doing all the, all the above that I just said, the dogs see the humans as more of an authority figure. I have more confidence in them. I practice being around these triggers, and it doesn't mean the human's always leaving. And I practice being in the room alone, with that, and nothing bad happens. And once they have enough confidence and experience, exposure, uh, and, uh, with all those things, they're just comfortable and relaxed. Are they behind me? No, I don't know where they went. They were like, I'm out of here because the dog guy is not letting us go hang out next to the baby. All right, so these are, some tips, these are some tips and tricks that you can use if you have dogs that suffer from separation anxiety.